Hi guys, what's up? This is Mac from Mega How, and today I wanted to talk about how to survey. But before we do that, what is a survey? A survey is a site visit where you capture 802.11 and spectrum analysis data. In Ekaha World, you do it with your trusted, fast, reliable and amazing Ekaha Sidekick. Now, what types of surveys do we have? You have a Wi-Fi design survey. It's a site visit before you do your predictive design where you capture existing RF condition to understand what existing channels and interferers are being used on site and how they are going to affect your channel plan. You want to see if a site is affected by DFS, it can vastly change your 5 GHz channels allocation. You want to measure walls and ceilings and attenuation areas like racks attenuation to translate it into Ekahau when you create your predictive design, making sure that your Wi-Fi design will be accurate. You want to understand the limitations of mounting of your APs and antennas. Without that, you cannot do a good quality Wi-Fi design. Then you have a pre-deployment survey. It's an AP on a stick survey that you typically do in more challenging environments where you want to totally make sure that your predictive design is really going to work in a real world. Then, based on your brand new predictive design, you deploy your Wi-Fi network and you validate it with post-deployment survey, making sure that Wi-Fi network works spotlessly against your clearly defined requirements. Another type of survey is periodic health check. If your Wi-Fi is absolutely spotless today, it doesn't mean that it will stay that way. You might have new neighbors and they might have new Wi-Fi with new channel allocation that might affect your contention and therefore your capacity. You might have more users. Your users might have different types of devices. You can have a new meeting room, a new wall, a new rack, different stock on your racks. Everything will affect your Wi-Fi performance. Additionally, you might have newly introduced security risks that you wouldn't have known about without doing your periodic health check survey. Connected printers, broadcasting purely secured SSIDs, your users bringing their home routers with no encryption potentially and no authentication, providing very easy access to your corporate wired network. You want to know about those things. And the last type of survey is troubleshoot slash assessment survey, where your users report issues with Wi-Fi network and then you go in and do a survey to find what's wrong. Okay, so you have your sidekick and now you wonder what type of survey device should you use on site? Should it be a laptop, phone or maybe a tablet? And the answer to this question is from the captured data quality for a passive Wi-Fi site survey, it doesn't matter because it is your sidekick that captures that data for you. But when it comes to the convenience, mobile device is so much easier to use than a laptop because you have smaller form factor that is typically lighter with great battery life. You have pinch to zoom functionality. You can navigate around the application with your fingers, easily grab a picture and even note with your pen on top of the picture that you grabbed. All of that makes the experience a breeze. Now, let's discuss survey collection modes available to us. There are four different types. First one is stop and go. This is a legacy type of performing a survey where you have to click where you are, wait for Sidekick to collect that data. You can see a progress here. And then you move to the next position a few meters away. And while you move to that next position, you throw away data and then you have to click again and wait again. So it's not only capturing the least amount of data of all the modes available, but it's also very slow to do. Another mode, shall I call it traditional, is continuous. You start your survey, you click where you are, and the sidekick in the background is constantly capturing data. Even when you're standing still or moving slowly, it captures data all the time. And then you move to the next point on your map, you click accurately where you are, and then on the survey path that you've taken between the first point and the second point, all the data points captured by the sidekick when it's scanned through all the enabled channels 
will be equally spread across that path. And then you go to the third point and then you click where you are to the fourth point, you click where you are. So you basically, you start your survey and then you click when you stop, click when you start, click when you change pace and click when you turn. And with that mode, if you give it enough attention to details, you can have a very high quality, extremely accurate surveys done. Another mode, and this is totally my favorite, is autopilot. It's so massively, smashingly amazing that every time I use it, I can't sleep for three nights straight from all that excitement. It uses Apple AR Kit to do something that we call a dead reckoning. Your device can position itself after you do an initial calibration. So you walk around hands off, hands free, and a device with a sidekick does a survey for you. It's absolutely mind blowing. You start with AR Kit calibration. So you have to click exactly where you are at your starting point. Then you move to the next location. And after a few seconds or a minute of walking to that next location, you click exactly where you are again. And when you do that, your device is calibrated. You will have a blue dot that moves together with you on the map without you having to click anything. Mind blowing, isn't it? Due to the nature of the AR kit, your automatic positioning might start to sway away from the real path that you're on. When you notice that happening, slow down, find a next reference point on the map and in the real world, go there and click exactly where you are to correct the AR kit. Once you do that, it should be extremely, extremely accurate again. And the last survey collection mode is GPS. It's available only on mobile devices equipped with GPS radios. You use it outside and it's extremely beneficial in vast open spaces, especially with not too many reference points available to you. And next on the list, I can't find it. Next on the list are six steps for amazing, great quality site surveys. Step one, scale. It's absolutely crucial to ensure that the floor plan you're using is up to scale and then that you scale that floor plan accurately inside Ekahau. Pretty much everything that Ekahau does, calculates, shows, is based on the quality and accuracy of your scale. Step two, always use a sidekick, never use a dongle. A sidekick is a purposely built Wi-Fi survey measurement device. Every time you use it, the data captured by a sidekick is fast and accurate. I can't say the same about the data captured with dongles. Step three, only scan channels that you care about. In both pro and mobile survey applications, you can configure Sidekick to scan a specific set of channels. Less channels scanned equals faster scanning times, and faster scanning times equals more information. Step four, use the correct survey data collection method for your environment. Where you have tons of reference points, continuous might be the best choice where you have tons of doors that you have to close and open behind you, where you have quite a big spaces with not too many reference points, autopilot might be a better choice. When you're outside, GPS might be a better choice. The only mode that I don't have too many use cases for is stop and go, so I call it legacy. Step five, click accurately. Extremely important. Click where you are, not where you're going to be in five seconds. Ekaha will only be as accurate as you. And finally, step six, walk on both sides of what you care about. Never assume, always validate. Go everywhere that is in scope. And that's it, my friends. Until next time.